Welcome back, fellow software developers, to another episode of Time to Code. In the previous episodes, we have incrementally crafted a simple, yet user-friendly web application starting from scratch. In this episode, we will show how clear separation of concerns and using the right abstractions make integrating new features easier. Let's do some coding. But before adding further functionality, we need to fix one important bug. The cleanup of the temp file created in the web handler. The simple solution is of course to add a try finally block and to delete the file when created in the finally block. But why do we need this file in the first place? Why not just working with the request stream directly? The reason is, this temp file is needed by the draw.io executable to extract the scalable vector graphic file. So this temp file is an implementation detail. For this reason, let's push its handling closer to the code where it is needed and encapsulate it properly to fix the root cause of this bug in the design. This in turn would be easier if the workbook would have just one API to extract all SVG documents at once. Alright, let me start by pulling the two existing calls to the workbook out of the SVG processor and move it over to the web handler to make further refactoring steps easier. Let me simplify the remaining loop further by converting it into link queue statements. The consequence of this refactoring is that we need a new place for the save API. The save API anyhow doesn't fit well into the workbook any longer as the workbook is turning into an abstraction to access uploaded data only. The smallest step possible to address this aspect is to apply the interface segregation principle and to invent a new interface called iDocumentStore. In this step the interface will be still implemented by the workbook. Of course this change requires test adaptions. But as we can see, the tests are actually getting simpler, which indicates that the responsibilities and the overall design got clearer. Seems the parser document was not properly mocked, so let's quickly fix that. Ok, all tests are green, so we could submit this refactoring step to the version control system. Before moving on with our actual refactoring of encapsulating the temp file handling, let's finish the refactoring of the iDocument store and apply the single responsibility principle. That means we are going to extract the implementation of iDocumentStore from the Draw.io workbook. And of course we now also have to create an instance of the document store and have to pass it to the SVG processor instead of the workbook. Finally we are ready to encapsulate the two existing APIs of the workbook into a single one. A new API we will simply call load and it returns a collection of SVG documents. Now we can move the temp file handling into the implementation of this new method.
To simplify the implementation of this new method, I'm going to remove the async await handling for now. Now I can simply remove the unnecessary code and return the result of the link you query. Now we can simplify also the web handler a lot by removing all the code which is now encapsulated in the workbook. Let's quickly clean up the previous temp file handling, which is now fully encapsulated, as the new API works with the request stream directly. Let's quickly compile the code and see whether the refactoring was successful. Ok, one minor left over to be cleaned up. Now the code compiles without any warnings. This refactoring triggered some thoughts about which data I want to store and how. I would like to keep the uploaded files in case my logic changes and I need to reprocess those. And of course I need to store the final SVG files. Let's separate those two aspects by using two separate folders. Seeing the growing numbers of classes, it seems to be a good point in time to utilize the dependency injection capabilities of ASP.NET Core. This not only removes the need to do the composition manually, but also makes the web handlers even simpler. As all our classes are basically stateless, we can register them as singletons. And now, instead of creating the classes directly, we can simply import them into our web handler. Let's finish the document storage cleanup by moving all other file I.O. related operations behind iDocument Store. This does not yet fully encapsulate the storage implementation as the API still works with the file names. So the API still exposes the fact that the implementation uses a file system. This means that this abstraction needs further refactoring later on, if for example we want to use a database instead of a file system, which will be a topic of another episode. For now I'm fine having the storage responsibility addressed to a single class. Let's finish this refactoring step by quickly testing that all the web APIs are still working as expected. Instead of manually testing the web APIs through the browser, we should of course aim for automated tests. 
So before adding any further functionality or applying any further refactoring, let's close this test gap. I would prefer to not access external resources and to avoid any file I.O. in general in my tests, but in this workbook test, I cannot fully get rid of the file I.O. anyhow because of calling the draw I.O. executable. I could fake the call to the draw I.O. executable, but that would make the whole test useless. So then we can also keep this test simple by accessing the existing sample files. Unfortunately, executing the test directly in Visual Studio Code does not work. For unclear reasons, calling the draw.io executable simply fails. So I need to use .NET test to execute these tests. The tests are green. Awesome. Now we are ready to add new functionality, which is support for PNG files containing the draw.io model. Let's do one last cleanup and then we start by simply creating a copy of the existing workbook. A new workbook we will call Draw.io PNG Workbook. In this workbook, we cannot work with the input stream directly. Instead, we first need to extract the Draw.io model from the PNG file, save it to a temp file, and pass this temp file to the Draw.io executable. To extract the embedded model from the PNG file, we use a library called Metadata Extractor. With this library, it is pretty simple to access the metadata of the PNG file, search for the PNG text tag and extract the Draw.io model. As the draw.io model from the PNG file is URL encoded, we use the HTTP utility to decode it. To finally generate an SVG file, we also need the page name and the page index. The page name we derive from the name of the uploaded file. The page index we have to determine by searching the draw.io model, as the model could contain multiple pages, for example when the PNG was originally exported from a draw.io file with multiple tabs. With this information available, we can now export an SVG using the Draw.io executable. One minor correction, we need to pass the name of the uploaded file through the constructor of the class instead of the load API. To integrate the new workbook, we use a factory which decides based on the file extension which workbook implementation should be used for a particular uploaded file. Let's also add some logging to see which implementation is finally used. Now let's register the workbook factory to the dependency injection container so that we can import it into our web handler. In the web handler, we then use the factory to create a workbook for a particular uploaded file. Let's also make sure that all the uploaded files are passed to the SVG processor as one chunk. Add 
And with this, the support for the PNG files containing the draw.io model is fully implemented. Now we just need to test whether it works. But this time, instead of testing the web API again through the browser, I'm going to create a new test fixture. Of course, I could have developed the entire functionality using test-driven development, which means writing the test cases first. There are many cases where I use this technique, but there are also many cases where I like to start with refactoring, using the existing tests, and then see how the code gets in shape. In these cases, for me, coding is more like a craft where writing tests first doesn't fit well into my flow. One type of cases, however, where I almost always write the tests first is finding and fixing a bug. As soon as I have an idea where the issue could be, I use additional test cases to prove my ideas. Now that the tests finally pass, there is not really a need to test the new functionality in the application, but I still want to demo it to you. Now that the new feature is working, it's time to refactor the solution, specifically removing the code duplication introduced. We start by creating a new class called DrawIO model, which will represent the drawing model. This class encapsulates all the details about the model, for example that the format is XML. It will then provide all necessary APIs to operate on this model. For the time being, we also need an API to serialize the model into a temp file, which we need to call the draw.io executable. Now let's use the new draw.io model class in the other workbook implementation as well. Let's continue with encapsulating the handling of the draw.io executable in a separate class called draw.io app. This class will not only encapsulate the command line arguments and the execution of the draw.io executable, but it also allows us to further encapsulate the temp file handling. To support exporting multiple SVG files from the same draw.io input file, we create the temp file on demand and use the dispose pattern to ensure that the temp file is properly cleaned up in the end. Finally, we will move the actual execution of the draw.io executable into the new draw.io app class. We finish this refactoring step with removing the temp file handling from the workbook class completely.
And of course, we also want to use the new Draw.io app class in the other workbook as well. And with all this screen, we conclude today's episode. Stay tuned for the next one, where we will upgrade to a real database for storing documents. Until then, happy coding!